Alright, so in this video I would like to show you some more options for creating surfaces. And for that I have prepared this rectangle and I'm going to use a four point surface and then use the four corners as input for this surface. Very simple. Um, now to get at those points I of course need a list item block with four indices. I'm going to plug in this list and then that will give me access to the four points and I can start plugging them. Whoops, connected the edges, not the corners. Here we go. So now I've got this simple surface and you can see that if you mess something up in the order you get a twisted surface. Now to make things a little bit more interesting and to show you that the four point surface can actually work on non-planar or create non-planar surfaces I'm going to move two of these points. So let's move that point Ah, connected it incorrectly. Here we go. Let's do it right this time. There we go. And now we've got this hyperbolic surface. Now, the next command I show you can't deal with non planar surfaces, but it can take more than four points or generally can take arbitrary shapes as long as they lie inside a single plane. I've also prepared something for that, so I'm going to hide this and show you this um, polyline that I've drawn. And you can see that one point is actually lying outside the plane. So if I now create a curve and go set one curve, use this polyline, and I go to boundary surface, if I plug this in, it will give me a warning saying that the planar surface routine returned no results because this point is outside of the, um, the plane of the other points. So I am actually going to move that point back to where it belongs. And for that, I'm going to select the polyline, turn on the control points, and then move that down into the plane of the origin and now you can see that the boundary surface can give us a result. Now if we have some form of curve we can of course also extrude it and we've already done this previously so this shouldn't be anything new to you. I'm going to take that curve, plug it in and extrude it in Z direction. Let's put a slider in front of that. There we go. Now when you extrude things, um, you often also want to fill the ends of that extrusion or if you do a pipe or if you do some form of um, um, you, you sweep for example a circle along a rail. Um, you want to close the ends of that and for that there's a command a block called cap so if you simply attach that to the result of this extrude you'll see that it closes both ends of that extrusion now after covering covering these um, fairly straightforward um, shapes and, and, and surfaces, I would like to show you some more, let's call them more freeform friendly um, options. I'm going to hide all of this again and I am going to draw myself two curves. So I'm going to go to the front and I'm going to, let's actually just hide this here. Okay, I'm going to Draw one curve on the front and one on the right. So I'm 
And now I'm going to move this curve so that they touch at their endpoints. And so now I've got these two curves, and now I can use something called a sum surface. And the sum surface simply takes two curves, set the first curve, set the second curve, and plug them into the sum surface. And you can see that it kind of intersects these two curves in space. And you can do similar things with four curves if you use the edge surface command. So whereas you can plug in two curves here, you can actually have, and you get the same curve which you have on this side on this side. If you use an edge surf, you can use four different curves on all sides. You can already see that it's quite easy or simple to create quite crazily shaped surfaces using Grasshopper and Rhino. I'm going to show you something that takes it even further. So let's delete this and let's bring back our polyline. And I'm going to turn on the control points again. I'm going to start moving them up to create this kind of I don't know what it would be, maybe the edge of a roof structure. And bring it back into Rhino, uh, sorry, Grasshopper. Go okay. set one curve. And now I can use the, where is it? Fragment patch, which simply takes a polyline and then creates a surface between it usually out of triangles, but it also sometimes, depending on what your polyline looks like, you'll also have rectangular surfaces in it. But these surfaces are all, all these facets of it are all planar, right? So let's go even further. I'm going to take this polyline and I'm going to obtain the control points. Is it control points? And I'm going to use these points to create a new curve, it creates a NURBS curve from those control points. There we go. So let's hide all this. Hide that again. Hide the control points. So now we've got this polyline, uh, sorry, this, this curve through space and we can use a patch command, a patch surface on that curve. Where is it? There we go. So plug in the curve and I'm actually going to bake it because then it gets slightly easier to see what the output is. And so you've got this wavy shaped surface. And one of the inputs of this patch surface is spans, so which by default is 20. So I'm going to create a slider to change that. And as you change these spans, you can see that it is less able to follow that outer definition line. And if I bake this again, you'll see the difference. Um, and this is because if I actually go back to the shaded perspective, you can actually see the UV lines of those two surfaces. So here it's got a lot more of these spans to control where the surface is supposed to go along. And here it's got a lot less, so it's less able to follow that original contour. And once again, this just shows that using Rhino and Grasshopper or any other 3D CAD programs, it's relatively easy to create very natural flowing surfaces and forms. But the issue then usually becomes, how do I turn this very 
free surface into something that can be built. And this is why we think it's very important that you think before you create your surfaces, because often it, you can create very um, surfaces that are very similar to the fully free-formed surface, but because they're based on simpler geometries, they become, they're a lot more straightforward to then actual, actually construct. So often by just turning on your brain a little bit earlier, you can save yourself a lot of effort and pain in the long run. That's just something to keep in mind when you're creating these surfaces. Thank you for watching.